Hey, Horde and soon-to-be Horde, this is the Injustice Count, where we tell the livers their crimes and make them pay for it. I'm Zombo and Dead Person. This is my little partner, Mini Zom. And we look at all types of media, seeing when an aliver harms, unalives, or offends us. We will do this by adding up violations to a point system that, mostly due to how we feel, will determine if we take alivers to court for a lawsuit or let it continue to exist. Oh, and the gore. Don't forget the gore. Ah, uh, yes, we'll get overexcited when it comes to gore. We want it, we need it, and crave it. <laughs> Today we're looking at something much different. Hotel Hell LLC. It's not really a zombie film, but more like a found footage film. Seems like it may have some good gore. But Zombo, I thought you said we were doing this to capitalize on views from the kill count since their video releases today, and we need to piggyback on their success to increase our success. Mini Zombie, we weren't supposed to say that part out loud. But that makes it a style. I don't That's like not that. Out. It's called being strategic and a smart businessman. But they're gonna get mad at you. Any publicity is good publicity. Gore, gore please. please! The movie starts off telling us it'll be a documentary based on an event. Then shows us a video of someone who went to that event. Looks like nothing crazy. It just looks like a normal haunted house. Till people in the basement tells them to run away fleeing outside. The ambulances and firefighters show up wheeling out an unalive body. Where was all the fun stuff? He's like something to hold his hostage for and show us sooner or later. Oh, poo. I want to see it now. They say the unaliving happened due to a gas leak malfunction, which is why everyone ran away. Photographer came out with some tea breaking entering to get some shots. But the real movie starts when Sarah reveals tape she's never seen before. So he lets some aliver enter and take a look at it. All right, I'm so ready. We are so far into this. Something is about to happen. The footage starts with some kids on a road trip talking about some boring aliver stuff. Their mission was to head to an abandoned hotel and use it as a haunted house. When mapping out a basement, they find some old Bibles and a pentagram. Ah, uh, it's a demon hotel. Go figure. Sarah said they stayed the night and drank old beers and talked about movies. Set up security footage, hire actors, make stationary props. They really doing business and numbers here. This is business business. Numbers. Is this working? Yes. Yay! You should like and subscribe to this video. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll be my favorite Horde member. They see a bunch of spooky things pop up as they stay a few nights. Even talking about how some alivers unalive themselves even after staying there. Sounds like they don't even care about their own well-being. Makes sense though, I mean, look at these alivers. Do you think these generic, frat, pale, white, no personality, boring, white alivers really care about themselves? Before the big night, the prop clown is somewhere where he shouldn't be. Some creepy things happen as the dummies move around all by themselves. Apparently, this demon is a one-trick pony. Then on another night, they find the clown at the bottom of the stairs. Along with Sarah saying demon things spooked out of it, we get to see the clowns move around even more. We have no business being here. If you paid the dime and you saw the signs and you ignored the crimes and you do the time, everybody knows that. A dummy wants to play with Paul, but he has blanket hiding powers. But that didn't seem to work. And of course, Paul is missing because he has horrible friends. That night, they head to the basement hearing piano music and the dummy's head's turning. And hooray! They found Paul. And they think he's just playing a prank. More time wasting and no actual story progression. Fun. Alex shows Tony some secret tapes, forcing them to stay in the house. Because everyone that was already in the basement was, was trying to get out. We already saw this. Why are you telling us this is unnecessary padding? This is just annoying. We see opening night with a packed house and a long line. And now, the main event. Finally, some gore. Gore. Give me some. Give me some. I want some gore. <laughs> yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh, little sexy stuff. Back at the interview, Sarah tells them to go to the abandoned hotel themselves. They break and enter into the abandoned haunted house as they find a girl in a room. The girl locks the door behind them and summons the demons to unalive them all. Wow. It only took 115 minutes, but something happened. I hope it was worth the wait. Some would call it a slow burn. Some would call it filler. But I would call it a crime against us. You know, wanting to get that hour and a half back. You know I have nothing but time hoard, but the last thing I want to do is waste it on this film. It feels like it's trying way too hard to be like Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity with less stakes and less payoff. Zombo, remember, this is about the violations. That other junk doesn't matter. You're right, Mini Zom. Let's get to the count. <laughs> This is the first time ever, Horde. Nothing really happened here but a few alivers dying off screen. I guess there was that one unaliving with the blood and everything. Agor does not make up waiting for an hour for. Yeah, I would have walked out at that point too. The moral of the story is, 
We should go back to zombie films. Agreed. We should return to the living dead. I'm a fucking zombie and you can't make me go stop. No. I'm a fucking zombie and I'm gonna eat your brain till it pops. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh. I've been listening to this song all day, baby. And now it's stuck in my head and maybe I'll just make my brain go boobity bop. Beep, boop, bop, beep. Pop. Okay. I think I want to try to see here. Done. Complete. But nitte. We're done! Holy shit! We're done! Ah! Hmm. Not really, huh?